I'm Tom Carver, and I am blessed to be able to serve as the superintendent for the Northwest District of the United Methodist Church in Iowa. And I appreciate this opportunity to speak with you, the United Methodist congregations in our part of the world. And today I want to talk with you about vision. And what I mean by vision is a picture of God's preferred future. It's where we intend to go and what we intend to have happen. And more than our own vision, we want to discern God's preferred future, God's vision uh, for us. And so I have a question for you. Do you have a vision of God's preferred future for your church or for your community and even for your individual life? That's what we're trying to find. Now, when it comes to our United Methodist churches, each fall we have a charge conference as a way to prepare for the coming year. In the past, we've had these uh, uh, charge conferences in groups of churches meeting together in a cluster conference. But this year, we're going to have individual charge conferences uh, conducted either by me or by several elders who will be assisting me. And we are asking every local church to have a visioning event. That's a time when all members of the congregation can hear about the vision and the mission of the congregation, your values, celebrate what God has done, and also look ahead to discern that vision, to cast that vision of what God would want to do in your church, through your church, in the future. Now, as a district, we've been working on vision for a few years, and we've developed a district vision statement saying, helping each other to see Jesus and become more like him. Because when we talk about a vision for the future of our churches, that vision has to include a way of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I mean, that's why we exist. Because this world is in trouble separated from God. Because individual people are in danger when they are disconnected from God. So we're talking about a vision for relationships. I mean, after all, relationships are everything. And we're in the people business. And it all leads to our relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ being reflected in our relationships with other people. Now, those relationships all begin with a name. And our district vision will come true when every person will be able to name someone who's helping them to see Jesus and become more like him. And at the same time, every person will also be able to name someone else that they are helping to see Jesus and become more like him. This is discipleship, and it's impossible to do on our own. And I think it's what we see in the Bible. And now, I want to show you what I mean. So here's the first few verses of the letter to the Philippians. So the letter begins with these words, Paul and Timothy servants of Jesus Christ. Now that's significant, those first three words, Paul and Timothy. That's significant because there are other letters to the Galatians, to the Ephesians, that are from Paul. But now this letter to the Philippians is from Paul and Timothy. You see, we know that when Paul first became a Christian, he was assisted by other people, and specifically was mentored, guided, helped by a man named Barnabas. Later on in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, uh, Paul went to the city of Lystra, and there he met a disciple named Timothy. And he invited Timothy to come and join him on his path to following Jesus. Now, what we know about Timothy is that his mother was Jewish, but his father was Greek. And that Timothy learned about the faith from his grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice. And Paul became Timothy's mentor, uh, guide, a uh, person who discipled Timothy along the way, so that they became co-workers, servants of Jesus Christ. Now, in this letter, they write to the Philippians and say, To all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, and here is their wish, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Isn't that the best greeting still for the church today, that we would know grace, forgiveness, repentance, reconciliation, and out of that then peace, uh, safety, security, out of the grace and the reconciliation of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and then in our relationships with each other. But here's what they say. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. Sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. That's how the gospel is made known. It's shared. And it's shared in relationships. You see, they would later on go... Uh, on to talk in the second chapter how they're to take care of each other's interests and not to think of themselves uh, better than each other. And in chapter 2 at verse 5, they would encourage the people to let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You see how that's becoming more like Jesus. Uh, but it happens out of relationships, out of discipling and encouraging and nurturing each other. Discipleships or uh, relationships with people who have a name and you know it. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And as the United Methodist Church, we have our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And what's the first step in making a disciple is in being a disciple <laughs> and having someone else mentor, guide, and help me to see Jesus and become more like Jesus. So I want you to know what a blessing it is to have a relationship with somebody who's helping you become more like Jesus. And I've had many of those over my life. Right now, I'm thankful for uh, a coach that I've been working with for the last three years who's helping me to see Jesus, uh, who's giving me another perspective, another set of eyes, uh, helping me set personal goals uh, so that I can become more effective in my own peer, uh, spiritual life, but also in my life as a superintendent. Uh, his name is Steve James, and he's a, a coach, and I thought it'd be fun if you might uh, meet him as well. Um, we connect over the internet every uh, other week or so, and, and I thought I'd call him up here, and you can meet him too. So Steve, thanks for uh, meeting the folks here in the Northwest District uh, of the Iowa Annual Conference. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to get a chance to uh, speak to them directly. I've heard about them a lot through our conversations. <laughs> yeah, you have. Uh, as, as someone who's kind of been like a coach, a mentor, a guide for me, uh, would it be safe to say that if I've screwed up, that people could blame you? <laughs> well, sure they can. Uh, uh, you know, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the, uh, one of the features of being the out of town consultant or coach is my uh, guy in North Carolina. It's his fault. No, right. you get and I can, I can take responsibility right, right off your shoulders there. If you want, if you want me to. Any just kind of words to the folks in the congregations about, uh, how to help, uh, encourage them to do that, to be Christ to one another and, and uh, help disciple each other. My advice to people who are in, the, in uh, a lay person in a local church or a, a pastor in a church is to, is to uh, think about the names of the people who have been helping you along the way throughout your life and to, to intentionally spend uh, more time in relationship with them. And the same same thing to look around the congregation where you where you live and serve, or the relationships that you have with people who live in the community where you where you are, and name some of the people there who you want to spend time with, so that they and you together might follow Jesus more closely. And in having those names, there's something powerful about that. That when you see them the next time. Uh, you almost automatically drop into an, a posture of prayer internally when you're in their presence because you're thinking, you know, how can I be more like Jesus, you know, alongside this person who I'm with right now? So, Steve, I'm, I'm blessed by our time. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to share you, at least give an insight to the folks here in Northwest Iowa. Because you're coming from where? Where are you at right now? I am in uh, Witsit, North Carolina. It's a, it's a, little, a little town, um, you know, in between Burlington and Greensboro, North Carolina. Right on okay. I-85. Yeah. So even across the distances between Iowa to North Carolina, uh, again, the technology has allowed us to connect as, to, uh, together as well. So, yeah. okay. Thanks, Steve. I think we'll, we'll uh, say goodbye for now. I'm going to take these folks on a little bit uh, further adventure, but uh, appreciate all you do. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the, uh, the privilege of being your coach and getting to share this journey with you. Okay.
Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, so you've met Steve, somebody who's been helping me to see Jesus and become more like him. And I want you to realize that discipleship like that cannot happen during worship. I mean, worship is when we praise God together and we're all as a group, uh, hear the scriptures and pray and so on. But actually talking with each other about what you're trying to improve on, what your weaknesses are, or your, your goals for your individual life, that's got to be a smaller group or an individual conversation. Now, at the same time, when somebody is helping us to see Jesus, we've also got to be helping other people to see Jesus. And it can obviously be people within the church, but also there's people outside the church who need to know about Jesus as well. And we need to have relationships with them. And it begins with a name. And honestly, it can be fun. Now, the same thing, we have to get out of the church uh, to make that happen. And so I want to give an example of a church uh, who's doing that. And so uh, let's go see. Come on. I recently received a postcard from the Rock Branch United Methodist Church. A little open country church just south of Highway 20 and it had an invitation to the surrounding community to come out for a ice cream social and a car, truck, and tractor show and shine. Okay, so Pastor Harold, I mean, how did you, uh, uh, or who do you hope was going to come to this event? Well, we hope that people who like ice cream, first of all, and then we know that there's a lot of cars and trucks and tractors and tucked away in barns and garages everywhere that people are very proud of. And so we thought it would be an opportunity to get some of the people in the rural area here to bring out their vehicles. And so far it's worked. Okay, so have you met any new folks then? Well, yeah, a fellow by the name of Bob uh, brought his, his vehicle here and I didn't know him. I know he's a neighbor up the road a ways, but I've never met him before, so. I'm Scott. Hey Scott, who'd you bring with you? This is, this is my girlfriend, Dina. Hi, I'm Don. Roger. Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Linda. Hi. Elsie. Hi, Elsie. Brimley. Brimley. Hi, Brimley. I'm Dan. I'm Bruce. Raymond. I'm Brian. I'm Roger. Chance to meet any folks uh, in the neighbors neighborhood? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a good chance for a lot of them to come around and uh, get together. We uh, just needed something to kind of have a social event going. Hey, Alec. Joanne. My name is Randy. Hey, Randy. Heather. Hi, Heather. Seth. Hi, Seth. Haley. Hi, Haley. Hi, <laughs> Taylor. Haley, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. What's your name? Olivia. Olivia. Oh, my. <laughs> my first name is Gary. Hi, Gary. Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, I'm Skip. Enjoying the afternoon out here. Thanks for having us. So as you can see, there's ways that you can connect with people in your neighborhood and learn their names. And out of that grow a relationship that can become a friendship that can help people be introduced to the love of God in Jesus Christ. A relationship where we're helping each other to see Jesus and become more like Him. That's the future for our church. The vision that you're developing for your congregation will include relationships that uh, are helping other people know Jesus. Now, the last part of what uh, Paul wrote that I want to share with you this morning is where Paul says he is confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion right up until the day of Christ Jesus. What God is doing through us, he's not done yet. And God will bring it to completion as we seek his vision, seek God's guidance for our community, our churches, and all of our lives.